So um, I'll remind you that uh, uh, I'll remind you that a demo draft is due this Sunday. Uh, uh, we're not doing a demo day because of everything. Uh, but I still want to see the state of the art at this point in time. Uh, so turn in a full game folder link zipped up on your Google Drive, the link on on uh, Brightspace, uh, not packages, not uh, the projects on Brightspace, but a link to your Google Drive. So, okay, uh, Spencer wants to go first because he has an appointment someplace. So, Spencer, you have the floor. All right. Can we all see that? Yeah. All right. So very basic main menu um, that I could definitely make look a little prettier. Uh, but you can exit the game. You can start the game. Functions more important than style in this class. Uh, from here, you can go to the pause button. You can restart to get a new map. Uh, go back to the main menu if you wanted to, but it's easier just to do the restart button. So I can keep doing that until I find whatever map that I want. Uh, and then beyond that, it's just a normal tower defense game for the first round. So if I just put down a whole bunch of machine gun turrets, um, then spawn the creeps and they'll take them out. I'll get a little bit of money. And at the end of each round, I'll get one more uh, perk point, which I can use to buy from this menu. Um, That's really so good. There's all, That's really so there's good. All, well, actually, this one, this part I didn't have to do. I didn't have to do the perks because this was included with the package, luckily. I just tweaked a few of them. Um, so I can't take full credit for that. Uh, and then you can also buy unlimited availability of towers. I'm going to uh, make a better tooltip for this. Um, but if you have 20 perk points, you can have the towers be available at all times. Because if I show you right now, as I spawn these creeps, they'll come through, uh, get taken out. And as we start the next round, uh, limited there's a limited number of towers available. So each round, uh, each tower is just randomly assigned. Uh, sometimes I'll have access to a whole bunch of them. Sometimes I'll have access to only a few. So you have to be very careful about when you're building towers uh, because you don't know for sure whether or not one's going to be available in the next round. Um, so beyond just those mechanics right there, all I have to do is work on balancing. So I might change around like the uh, um, the range of the towers, I might add or change how some of the towers work. So like as a resource tower that generates money and then after it's generated a certain amount of money, you can actually upgrade it into uh, a normal tower, just a machine gun tower, or a cannon tower. There's also mines and blockers that you can put on the track itself. Uh, and there's AOE towers, a laser tower and a support tower, which is not available. Oh no, yes it is. Uh, the support tower just increases the range of all friendly towers around it. So I could add a little bit more functionality to that to make it do like more damage or something. But at the moment, it just does uh, range increases. Uh, but that's basically all that I wanted for core functionality. So from here on out, it's just adding anything that I can think of. Uh, as what happens before. when your adversaries reach the end of the path there? Does that take away points or something? Yeah, so there's a health up here. I set it to 500 um, okay. because I was just I testing. Uh, so that'll be reset. Uh, that could also be part of a difficulty scaling. I uh, just start them out with less health. Uh, and I can probably add a perk, which if you buy it, then you'll regenerate. Or there is actually already a perk in here. Uh, if you buy it, then you'll regenerate health at the end of each round that you successfully make through. Um, and beyond that, I need to get rid of, or I need to fix this uh, wave limit thing uh, so that it doesn't reset you. But core functionality was, I'm happy with what came out here. Uh, so I just need to make it look better and add a, a few extra um, little. So I like at the beginning that you get to flick through maps until you like one that you like, get one you like, that's kind of cool. I, also, I was also thinking about uh, doing different sized maps. Uh, I decided to shrink the size of the map that I started out with, or from what I started out with, just because it makes it easier to see. Yeah. Um, I, do, I doubt I'll have that done for any uh, final product this, this semester, but that was something that I definitely thought about. 
Well, the, the scale is very appropriate, I think. It makes nice, quick rounds, and the things are visible. You know, the turrets have a little 3D visibility to them. That's great. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Spencer? Uh, I had a question. This is Apon. Are the maps completely random, or are they like ones that you pre-made so that it cycles through those? Uh, completely random. So I just... I basically just did like uh, I set each tile in here to either passable or not passable, just random seating, and then I did a breadth first search from the bottom left to the top right corner. So it's it's changes every time. <laughs> That's very cool. Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Uh, yeah, uh, Devin here, Devin Carter. Um, so when it ha uh in regards to tower placement, like how does that exactly work? Can they how how much can they overlap? Uh, so I just have a one radius. Uh, well, I can I can kind of show you here, but I have a, a one radius just collider on each one. Uh, so very little amount of overlap. It's like if you play if you ever played the original uh, Bloons Tower Defense, you can get those monkeys kind of all stacked up on top of each other. Yeah, that, so that's actually what I'm specifically here. asking. <laughs> yeah, so you can get them pretty pretty well stacked in. Uh, that's another thing that I would take a look at, uh, like future work wise is maybe increasing the size of the towers because you can fit a lot of towers onto this map uh which yeah. potentially could make it kind of easy i i, I was thinking because like i i think the last time i played i played like what like btd6 um some of the stronger towers were bigger and some of the weaker towers were just smaller like super yeah, monkey so... was massive of course uh, the, only, the other thing is, though, uh, so I, I need to find a balance because there's not, you can upgrade a little bit, uh, but there's only one upgrade pretty much per uh, uh, per tower. So it's not like in like a Bloom Tower Defense game where you can just keep on upgrading like four times down one path or whatever it is. Uh, so I, it needs to be a balance between the size so that you can't place too many, but also just allow you to place enough because you can't just have super powerful towers at the same time. Yep. Very cool. That well, that's great. Um, very cool. So I, I, I don't think I mentioned this to this class, but um, there, there's, and, and this, of course, doesn't apply to some of you who are doing uh, mobile games, but there is this thing called WebGL Publisher that is uh, a a package and if you use the webgl publisher it serves your game on the unity website and you end up with a url that you can give to people and your game is then playable in a web browser and uh this is not a requirement but it's an optional bonus if anybody wants to compile their game for webgl and uh, fight their way through WebGL Publisher and get it on the Unity site. Um, some of the uh, demo games that uh, the starter games, like the cart game and uh, uh, first person shooter, they have lessons on how to publish the game. Uh, but uh, this is not a requirement, it's just an option but I will award bonus points for anybody who fights their way through it because uh, maybe someday I could serve, I could, I could then ha have these available for other people to play. All right, so any, any further questions for Spencer? Okay, so I'm, uh, you can leave whenever you need to, Spencer. Um, so I'm going to... Um, drop down to Forrest Swift uh, so that he doesn't end up being the last one again. <laughs> so Forrest, you're up. All right. Uh, so and I'll go have... backwards through the alphabet from here. So, um... so I have a bunch to show today. Um, uh oh, except I can't see the, okay. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to catch up on my checklist before Sunday. <laughs> um, so the things that I did so far, uh, I got player can now be hit by enemies. Um, I made a follow camera that follows each player independently. Um, and I implemented a boss monster. 
Um, so you can see like each player has their own camera that'll follow them around. I made this map so I can just kind of see where I'm at. Um, I've got my little like domain of spikies over here. Uh, you can kill them. They can kill you and send you back to uh, the spawn if you get hit. I've got a bunch of bullies up here. Um, so one of my problems right now is I don't have any sort of check to see if you're actually swinging your sword so you can do this like cheating poke fencing thing uh, and just easily defeat everyone. But I think that that'll be pretty easy to fix. So that's one of my things that I'm going to do uh, before the demo day. I have this boss monster that's like a mixture of the bully and the spiker. Um, he follows you around for a while before dashing and pluffing up to a massive size. Um, uh, so some things that I've been running into, there's like this bug with like server side kills where sometimes you will, the server will recognize you as having killed one of the enemies, but the client won't recognize it. So they'll just like sit there doing nothing until you come and kill them again on the client. Um, there's the uh, sword pointing attacks. Uh, and I really want to get the Cinemachine, the softbox camera set up because this like very tight camera is a little hard to actually like play the game with. I think it'd be a lot better if you could move in like a big box uh, before the camera started to drag. So that's what I've got this week. Can I ask a question? Uh, uh, when you when you start these, one of them starts the the upper left here started as a server, right? Yeah, and I could hit the host, and then it would do. It would start as a server and a client too, um, if I wanted to. But it it does that does work. The start as host will then. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that that's great. And I, I have a question: Have you tried this over with multiple computers yet, or has it just been multiple uh, instances of the game playing on the same computer? It has just been multiple instances of the game on the same computer. Um, I definitely could look into, I don't think it's too hard to set up like a, a IP and host it. Um, so I could definitely look into that. I do have multiple laptops I can test on. Yeah. Um, I, 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 it, it should work. I mean, the, the fundamentals are all there for it to work, but uh, it's something to try before you gather a bunch of people in a room and say, hey, let's play the cool game, because yeah. <laughs> you want to test that. Well, that looks great. Uh, I, I applaud your persistence at fighting your way through uh, what's basically a beta software system. <laughs> Because netcode is not really there yet. But anyway, that's yeah. Great. There's like there's like no documentation for it. Exactly. I really, I just have like that one uh, like Dilmer games tutorial that I sometimes reference. But other than that, there's just like no info. Yeah, that, that's that's a, a real issue with this system. So, any comments, questions, suggestions for uh, Forrest and his his multiplayer? I have, um, this is Dorothy Harris. I have a, a question. Um, would you consider making the big or boss guy like need multiple hits to kill him instead of just poking him like all the other small ones? Yeah, so that's actually something I want to have with all of the characters is health mechanics. Right now, everyone is insta hit kill, um, but that's something I'm going to get done before Sunday for sure. Cool. Any other comments? Questions, suggestions? I'm writing stuff down here, I'm sorry. All right, well, moving on to Elijah. You here, Elijah? I am here. Caught me at a fun time. I'm making lighting happening. Um, so let's go to... I guess I should share as well. Okay, so the biggest, or the, I guess one of the biggest things I've done, I don't really remember what happened since last time, to be honest, but I made this uh, main menu. So like, it's a different scene and I just decorated it a lot, kind of to the theme that I want the rest of the map to feel like. 
So like lots of plants and because it's supposed to be a jungle, like there's a lot, of, it's kind of dark in here and stuff, but there's, you know, light hitting certain key points. I don't think I can pay attention to the lighting uh, for the entire map, but for this, I wanted to make this guy bright and like kind of a little highlight on the temple and stuff. Um, turn, down, turn down the shadow darkness and, and it won't be such a dark scene. Uh, yeah, well, I kind of... I kind of liked how dark it was because okay. I feel like a jungle, but I, I also liked how it was, you know, there's no shadows on these things. I want you to focus on those. But anywho. And it's great that your little character there is idling. So, yeah. you know, it's not a static scene. That's very cool. Yeah, we got him and then we got a little fire doing its fire thing. Um, that's all I've got for that. Um, well, this is laggy. Oh dear, something's happened. <laughs> That's super laggy. Uh, it's super laggy because we're competing with Zoom. Well, There's that, and I just created like a whole bunch of, let's see, let's end this. I'm, I'm working on, uh, oh, this is a main menu. I'm working on like another kind of level. So I have this giant chamber. Um, I have a bunch of torches that I'm working on. So I'm thinking there's too many particles in this room, uh, which is why we started lagging out because all of these are oh, the fire things. I don't are know. they all dynamic? Uh, dynamic in what way? Like just when they're generating lighting, like are they baked into the environment or are they just- Oh, probably not. Yeah, okay. I have to deal with all the lighting stuff. It, it's been a while since I've done any lighting stuff with Unity, but um, I remember like you can bake it into the environment so it's not constantly loading it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with that because I was I was dealing with a problem where switching between scenes, it's like my main menu would look good, and then when I jumped when I loaded this level, it like it looked gross. Yeah, um, so uh, that's that's an issue with transitioning among scenes. Uh, yeah. if, if the lighting is not baked, then when you transition into a scene, it, it'll have the unbaked lighting, which can look very weird. And if what you're used to doing is letting it generate lighting while you're in the scene playing with it, uh, and, and it only generates lighting when you're, in the, when, when you're in the editor not playing, and that's when it generates the lighting. And so, uh, the, the that's what this is for right yeah and and i can't see whether you have auto generate on or not and and the other thing you know like uh the mixed lighting and the real-time lighting those are both relatively expensive when it comes to baking mm -hmm. like the uh, bake in a big scene can take 45 minutes if the if you have a lot of lights and a lot of things that are light map static right or contribute gi whatever you want to call it and so it but if you turn off mixed lighting and you turn off real-time lighting and you just accept kind of the low level normal lighting which means you won't have any indirect bounce lighting which is a nice effect but you know it's expensive to generate but if you turn those both off and turn off auto generate and generate the lighting it then makes uh, the the a kind of quick version of the lighting that looks okay it doesn't have indirect bounce lighting you know like and it doesn't have various bleed and other stuff that that are high test effects right uh, but it, it it functions and, and that's then baked. And then when you transition into that scene, you'll have the proper lighting. And if you wanna, you know, spend some cycles, you can bake it with mixed lighting or real time on and, you know, right. wait the 45 minutes while it bakes your big scene. But a big scene does take a long time to bake. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've just, we like, I've just lighting, recently yeah. messed with the lighting stuff, so. Like I've just now ran into this problem, so yeah, I'll have to. I think make it you all. might you might run into some issues with the maximum number of pixel lights, which is one of the quality settings. Okay. Uh, 
but I, I don't know. And, and definitely, you know, if you make the, the lights baked and bake them, spend the time to bake them, then that doesn't take any cycles at runtime to do, do the lighting. The lighting is just painted on the world and right. it doesn't take any cycles. So, yep. you know, but, you know, it's a question of how much, how much computer cycles you want to do ahead of time to save cycles when you're running. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. But that's, I just have to do some level stuff. Haven't done much other than that, to be honest. Okay, but, but that looks very cool. And, uh, but yeah, do fix the lighting thing so that when you transition among scenes, it's it's baked, even right. if it's just a half-ass, no mix, no real-time right. uh, lighting. You'll find it looks okay. Okay, great. Any, any, Comments, questions, suggestions for Elijah and his rewinding portal game, which is now looking very pretty. No? Uh, Roshan, you're up. If uh, you Are you here, Roshan? I don't see you. Okay, Peter. Peter, did you get the, did you get your high test car physics package? I did, I did, and um, I'm pretty excited about it. So I'll just jump in to start talking about it. Um, let me share my Unity. So I did end up getting um, Eddie's car physics. Um, it's a pretty, I would say it's a pretty heavy um, Unity asset. There's so much to it. Um, so I've been exploring it pretty heavily. The first thing I had to do was overall overhaul how I set up uh, my car. So I'll just bring up um, my sports car real quick. Um, as you can see, I ended up totally overhauling like how the car is set up inside of Unity. So um, the first things I had to do was I ended up having to um, add in a whole section to this called um, transformations. And as you can see, sports car transformations. So this, this was included with all of my um, vehicles that I downloaded. Um, what it comes with is pretty much a uh, transformation for each, um, the, the body, the calipers, and the wheels. Um, so the way that I'll, I'll get into how Eddie's car physics works in a sec, but just to talk about like what I had to change with my cars was I had to add this whole transformation uh, part and the colliders, I ended up having to make them mesh colliders. Um, Eddie's car physics just works that way. Um, I did run some performance tests and honestly, they're not too much different. Like honestly, the mesh colliders do have a performance. Um, they do weigh it down a little bit, but not enough where I noticed like serious issues. Um, so I had to create a mesh collider for the body, uh, the roof and the tailpiece or the spoiler. Uh, and the wheel objects, I used to have wheel transformations inside of here, um, but now I have just the wheel colliders. So just the wheel colliders um, right now, like this is not, I've been playing around with where the colliders are right now. So you can see they're uh, a little bit down right now. Um, I've also been playing around with the center and the edge of the wheels. So I'll, I'll, I can get into that in a little bit, but um, yeah. So Eddie's car physics, pretty much the base of it is just this vehicle controller. Now this is a pretty, uh, pretty hefty controller. Um, I've been trying to, to, to read through it, but I mean, it is like 2000 lines of code. So there's only so much I can learn, um, but it sets up all the wheels and the center of mass. So what I've been playing around with is, um, is like where to set this position and height and how it affects the cars. Um, the lower it is and the more centered the car it is, the better it handles, the more, obviously the more erroneous it is, like the crazier the cars handle. Um, and then like it gives you a lot of functionality over like how fast the car moves and just some other balancing stuff in terms of um, uh, suspension. Wow. And then the other thing is this uh, vehicle standard input. This is just to control the car. So every car needs it. It doesn't necessarily have any impact on how the car drives. It's generally just for, um, you know, the user controls. And then there's this uh, vehicle view configuration. Um, and the camera is actually very cool. I've been looking into that too, but it uses a dynamic 
camera. So I had a static overhead camera, um, but this one is has some really cool scripting uh, in terms of like it moves and responds with the car. So it's almost like it's very close to Forza. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much that. And I will just get into playing the game quick. Um, so my speedometer right now is not working as it should. It does measure kilometers per hour pretty accurately, um, but the arrow doesn't move. But yeah, so here's the car moving right now. Um, I do need to figure out the uh, collision with the ground. So I need to put in some scripts and I think Eddie's comes with a little bit of um, uh, scripts for the ground textures. So like the car will respond differently. Um, and also right now my car goes like Mach 3 if I let it. So I have to figure out a way to cap it out somehow. Um, Cause I just kind of held it down one time and it got up to like a thousand kilometers per hour. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, but I don't really want that for my game. So as you can see right now, I'm going extremely fast. Um, but yeah, the car handles great. So that was a really cool uh, script. And like I said, there's so much to explore with it. So, um, you know, the first thing I did was I looked up just how to set up the cars and it probably took me maybe an hour and a half to get this one running as it should, but um, it's, it's a great script and like there's still a lot I have to do for the game before it's like the final product. But as far as the cars moving now, they're moving, they're handling good. Uh, now it's just about fine tuning each car. Very cool. Um, so it, 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 it definitely looks like a TMO. Um, but all TMOs are powerful uh, and they definitely looks like a learning curve. Shame you couldn't have gotten this earlier in the semester, but you know, I understand. And you've got time still to do a lot of stuff with this, but uh, very cool. Any comments, questions, suggestions? Uh, I had a question. This is Apon. I was just wondering, do you have the garbage truck set up at all? Or is that, because <laughs> I'm really uh, curious to see that go like a thousand miles per hour. <laughs> Yeah, no, I will certainly get that set up for next week, and I'll try and leave that uh, without too much twindling so you could see it flopping all around. But um, I actually did, this truck came with the script, and it handles kind of boxy, too. So there was a lot of tipping and whatnot. Um, so in short, no, but I'm excited as well for it. Great. Um, I, I, I will mention, I think next week what we'll, we'll have our demo day when you'll each get a chance to like really demo the mechanics of your, your game, uh, hopefully. Um, all right, any comments, questions, suggestions for Peter and his cars? No? All right, stop sharing then. What do we got in chat here? Um, does the garbage truck run? Okay. Um, so, um, and Andy, you're up. Unless Alrighty. So Roshan came. No, she's not here still. Go ahead, Andy. So uh, this week I've been working on getting my combat working. Um, it's almost fully done. I can't show you right now because I don't have the, uh, my Unity on this computer, but my combat is almost fully working as well as I actually spent money on a tile pack, asset pack, because I kind of felt like my islands needed a bit of a change. I have almost everything set up to make them work. I just now need to do the textures for them and set up the layering on it. But hopefully by next week, I'll have that done and will be in a lot better of a spot and have the placement done for it too. Cool. But, so that's where I'm at right now. Um, All right. Well, you know, any any proper video game team has one person who's responsible for uh, making the visual assets and another person who's responsible for coding how things work. And since we're working alone and we're all coders, uh, it, it's perfectly reasonable to spend a little change on, on stuff. 
Any comments, questions, suggestions for Andy? All right, um, Matt, you're up. All right, I don't really have anything new to show off. Um, basically, I said auto run and some other, you know, minor quality of life things for stuff like that. I've been busy with capstone things this week, so. Yeah, how's that going? Uh, pretty good. All the hard stuff's out of the way now. I just have to write the final report now. <laughs> Well, uh, plug away. That's an important class. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on, uh, Dorothy, you're up. Sure. I don't have a crazy amount. I had a pretty busy week. Um, one class, which I know um, Abby has as well, had a homework due Monday, a test Tuesday, a demo of the homework Wednesday, and significant progress for a lab on Wednesday. <laughs> so, been... Whose class was that? Um, it's an ECE class, so it's DSP. Okay. It's been a little bit busy. <laughs> it, that class hurts. Yeah. Um, anyways, but I did get a start menu. Um, also I have music added. I just added in, um, and I'm hoping if it loads, did that? Oh, okay. I don't know if you'll be able to hear the music. Someone had issues with it before. Can you hear music at all? No, but we trust you. I, I kind of oh. can hear it. Okay. Well, I have music added and I have audio settings where you can turn it down currently. Um, and then I have a how to play. Very it. important yes. component. Yes. Um, Being I have able to turn that, uh, mm -hmm. that tank demo uh, game from 312 had the most annoying music. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, there there was no way to turn it down except to press the mute button and uh, uh, and and so that was one of the additional assignments for people who did the tank demo was they had to include a way to turn off turn turn down or turn off the sound but yeah great yeah and then I have a how to play which I'm gonna actually put a description here but it was just setting things up. And then when I start the game, it goes into the other scene and it has the whole other scene again where you can move things around, which I don't need to really show. Um, and then it goes here, which I also have music, but I haven't finished any of this yet. But still, all this is here again. Yep. OK. So I got a start yep. menu and I got music in. Cool. Uh, any comments, qu questions, suggestions for our duck lady? I love it. it. That's such a <laughs> that's such a wonderful concept. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping since now it's Thursday and all that's behind me, I have extra time for once. So I'm like, I have plenty of time to work on my duck game between now and Saturday or Sunday. And and yeah, and and I by no means expect the game to be finished by Sunday. I just want to see what you've got by Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you, we, we have until the final exam time slot, whenever that is. I forget when it is for this class, but that's the final submission date when I'll actually look at what I'm going to grade. So lots of time still for plenty of improvements on everything, although I'm cool. seeing great stuff from all of you. So it's not a problem. Any, any comments, questions, suggestions for Dorothy? No? Okay, Will, you're up. Will? Yeah, Will. There you are. Okay. I'm on there. Um, so I have uh, two like big things that I did. Um, one is to just um, download and get this um, this Sebastian Lake project going, which uh, generates uh, planets. Um, and it's sort of a stand in for now, although if I can figure out how some of these parameters are working, I might sort of incorporate it into the final. <coughs> um, and then the other thing I did was um, uh, generate these uh, this cellular automata um, sort of visual. Um, 
and it, it's basically a Wolfram cellular automata. Um, and the code is, I got the code from a, um, a tutorial that I linked to, that I can link to, but it, it's basically just like, I won't explain what it is. I think Professor explained what it is last, last week, but I really like it because it has, it has like this nice sort of like visual pattern. Um, and I like it as a sort of, I don't know, like I keep talking about 2D and 3D and there's no necessarily like technical correspondence between these two shapes um, as of yet. But if I can figure out how to expose the parameters of um, the planet generator to the rule set um, for the CA visualization, then there can be some sort of like correspondence between the two. And that's ultimately my goal. Um, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so right now, so far, like I have basically, this is like the rules of um, cellular automata. And if you look up like see a rule set online, then you can sort of like see how it, like that's high level, how it works. So basically you sort of like set these numbers as some sort of rule. Um, and then um, for the planet, there's this randomizing process. Um, and hopefully those two things will be linked. Um, but then you can, you get, you get these different patterns. Um, and I don't think that it's, it's working quite properly with my grid. Um, it, but your choice of rules, it, it, it makes a difference what those, what those rules are. And, the, and they're only of some of them, only some of the rules make visually attractive patterns. Each, each of those rules corresponds to a decision that's being made based on the on the number of neighbors uh, uh, and yeah so you know different rules give different patterns and uh, th this particular one is uh, sometimes called the wallpaper design algorithm uh, because it it starts <laughs> with a random seed of zeros and ones in the top row and then it progresses down the down the picture uh, uh, with with the different uh, based on the rules, each each row being a different generation of this rule generator that says it looks at its neighborhood. How many have I got there? Am I born or am I do I die? Uh, kind of thing, and so you get the blues and whites. It, that's very cool. That's very cool, and. Yeah, if you could map that on your planets, that would be a really interesting thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As it as it stands, those uh, those spherical planets look quite good. Yeah, they're sweet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and and there's the um, the sort of like initial row or whatever. Um, yeah. Is yeah, yeah. that's randomly thrown, probably right? Because I mean, you can look at you, you can look at what happens if you have like an an empty top row with just a small pattern in it, and how that pattern then generates and spreads. And you can get things like gliders that move across the thing. There, it, it, the cellular automata thing is a whole world. And, yeah. uh, okay. Thank you. Do you, do you have any idea where this is going in terms of a game that's going to be played, or is this just a demonstration of these different algorithms? It would be nice to have an interface um, as a sort of, I don't know, like, it, it, I think this would be really hard to do right, but sort of like a, to see it, like, I don't know, it's like a exploring like those algor algorithms or whatever. Basically, you have like an interface where you can select the rule set. Uh -huh. like a creative way of selecting that or the pattern that you're talking about and then sort of seeing how it gets visualized. That, that, that sounds like a fun game to me. Yeah. Um, it, you might be interested in the lecture I'm going to do after class, after you guys are done, uh, spherical gravity, which you could then put on your little planets and uh, walk a character around on them, which would be kind of cool. Okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Will? David, you're up. David, where are you? Defrumalo, you're not here, okay? Peter Kluki, you're up. Uh, hello, can you hear me? 
Yep. All right, awesome. <clears throat> okay, I'll share my screen. Okay, um, so I finally figured out how to make grass work. Um, I'll just show you right here. Uh, basically, I had to just completely give up on uh, like altering the terrain data manually and basically just have an object placer, get like a prefab and place a bunch of grass everywhere. Actually, it wasn't quite as bad as I was thinking. Um, it's not a very expensive thing to do, um, placing objects down. So it seems like it works pretty well. I'm just waiting for this like to load. Grass is just a quad anyway, so it's not Yeah, that. exactly. It's very slow. OK, there we go. Um, you can see these little patches of grass over here. Um, the other thing I did, which is kind of a big deal, is I gave uh, all the objects that I've been placing uh, random rotations, so they're not all like oriented in the same direction. Um, it was looking very strange, especially with like the rocks and stuff. Um, I can show you show you here actually. So originally, um, all these rocks were oriented in the same direction. Yeah. Okay. Which it was just look it was looking very strange. Yeah. So basically, I just I just gave everything random rotation. Um, so now that's looking a lot nicer. I also gave the rocks a uh, collider. Um, so now you can't walk through them, which is nice. Uh, let's see what else did I do. A couple other things. Um, oh, I made the rocks a little bit smaller as well because they they were a little too large. Um, I think I might still want to adjust the colors of the rocks a little bit because right now they, they kind of stand out. Um, other than that, I think I'm pretty much done with like the procedural generation part. Um, I guess it's now just I want to maybe add like a UI elements to sh like have like a health bar the enemies can um, alter if you get too close to you. Um, and maybe some kind of wind win condition as well. But other than that, I think I'm pretty much all set. OK, the hard stuff's done. Yes. Cool. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Peter? Um, I guess I have a curious comment since like this is supposed to be procedurally generated. Um, is there any way like you can have the hierarchy like um, everything clone in the hierarchy in a much cleaner way? Because I was looking at the hierarchy and it's just yeah. like a constant line, it, and I was like, yeah. eh. <laughs> um, I'm I'm not completely sure, but it's definitely something I want I want to look up. Um, Maybe like have them as children of some other object, because um, that yeah, way it's, like, it'll be a little cleaner. That way you can like open up, um, open up an object and then see all the clones if you want. That, yeah, that's like easy just to do when you instantiate the object. Just make it the make make its parent the transform that's creating them, and and yeah. that, that cleans up your your uh, hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Devin, you're up. Okay, uh, I've been capstoning, so nothing to show off. But I'm currently on the uh, grind to introduce some sense of art style and lighting into my project. That's actually why I commented on uh, the lighting earlier with uh, Eli's work, um, because I'm trying to figure that out as well. It's kind of uh, it's trials and tribulation, and I haven't had a lot of time. So these next couple days, I'm hoping to grind it out so that I can actually have art for the demo, because right now it's still the placeholder textures that I've constantly shown. So. <laughs> yep. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Unity has a whole a whole series of lectures on prototyping, which is where you do exactly what you've done, uh, fill things in with placeholders, and then you know later come back and pretty it up. Uh, but yeah, uh, and ag again, the warning about lighting. Uh, if, if you have the real time or the mixed checked, it can the, the baking can take a long time and and you can get pretty much acceptable lighting with both of those turned off and generating it. Uh, but yeah, that lighting is an issue. And and there are limitations on the number of pixel lights and the quality settings and other places. But yeah, okay. I'm having some unique problems too because um, as I like in my early showcases 
way back at the start of the semester, I was making my own models. So there's some weird interactions going on between my models and the lighting I'm trying to get. Um, if you're creating, if you're creating meshes, uh, you know, the, they have to have proper normals and there, there is a generate normals. Uh, yeah, I've been having to go back into my blender files and recalculate some of the normals because I have noticed some um that were just incorrect they were calculated inside out in fact i was just <laughs> looking at one of my weapons and one of the parts of it is calculated inside out and i was looking at that like uh <laughs> yeah okay uh, uh, that's the winding order and yep okay cool any any comments questions suggestions for Devin? we'll see more next week i guess when yeah. we look at the demo Okay, um, Spencer's already gone, so Abby, you're up. Okay, um, I didn't get too much done because, like Dorothy said, DSP, but um, I did get the joystick working. So I already had my phone plugged in, I'm in play mode. Um, and we can move now, which is exciting. For a while, the joystick broke the, um, the, the gyroscope camera and it also wasn't displaying the coordinates in the top corner like it should you can see the change when i move um but i got all that working so that's pretty good um still have clearly quite a bit to do here you can see my vast expanse but i do have paths so that's progress um but now that i can actually move around the world and see things a little more clearly it, it's going to be much faster also i need to not i need to figure out how to just not fall down this hill but um you know that's a problem for later Okay, and and um, did, did you fight your way onto the phone with this? I still haven't tried Xcode, uh, not yet. Okay, uh, we'll we'll see if I end up getting that far or not. <laughs> okay, um, I I really like your joystick. The I played with the demo that you handed in with uh, your last report, and. I'm I'm actually thinking that there might be an application for this with uh, cars that uh, like like all of the car racing games that we have are controlled with arrow keys or W A S and D, which is yeah. an entirely wrong way to run a car. You don't like throw the steering all the way to the right hand lock and all the way to the left hand lock, which is what happens when you're doing WAS and D. And uh, so uh, you need some steering device that is more like a steering wheel that you kind of, you know, you go into a turn, you turn the wheel a little bit and you hold it there. And, and you don't like throw it all the way over to the right and all the way over to the left, which is what the WAS and D does. So I, I'm really interested in this joystick as a potential controller for cars. And I'm gonna actually play with that uh, at, at when, when I have some time, so. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. And I remember to just now figure out, I got the image to go away so you don't have this annoying circle in the middle of your screen whenever you move. So now we can just kind of swipe and go places. Okay, cool. All right. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Dorothy? Hopefully Xcode will work and you can put it on your phone. I'm not Dorothy, but yeah. Oh, I'm, uh, Abby, sorry. Yeah, close enough. I have a question. This is Dorothy. <laughs> I, I guess I'm just more curious. How is your character falling? Because I feel like when I made 3D games before, there wasn't like even an option for your character to fall down a hill. Like it just walked. I'm just yeah, more that's curious a, how that's happening. Me too. Um, <laughs> again, I was kind of like, I, I kind of I noticed that happening recently. I want to get more of the terrain developed first before I start dealing with that. But I mean, if anybody has suggestions, um, I'm also not quite sure why it just randomly falls. Um, I figure it can't be that difficult to figure out, but I just haven't tried. Is it a rigid body character or character controller? Uh, I think it's rigid body. Um, so, yeah, um, you you can always do something where um, you do a quaternion look rotation, uh, up vector kind of thing that gets a rotation that puts the uh, the the character's 
y vector up into the world y vector up. Uh, it, and that forms a rotation that would put your character up. And you could just keep resetting that whenever things went went awry. And that would keep your character upright. Uh, I think I did try uh, the, the constraints, you know, freezing rotation and stuff. And I never found a setting that, that made it work. So I don't know the answer to that. But uh, it, it could be something that you put in your in your script that just takes your your character and every once in a while sets it upright so that it doesn't tip over. I, I'm, I'm not sure what what will fix that, but it, it is something to fiddle with. Yeah, I'll play with it. OK, any comments, questions, suggestions? All right, Donato, you're up. All right. Uh, okay. So um, I got a couple things. Um, I worked around with the map more because I had to change it a lot based on what I was going to have in the demo and when this was finished because I don't have um, the the scenes that I wish I was able to have with time such as like the shop or the um, mystery room and stuff like that. So I had to change it around and the the map demo that I downloaded off of GitHub does did not like it at all when those things were missing and it took me a long time to fix it i actually got in contact with the guy that created it um <laughs> he was able to talk to me about it because i was it didn't work I, it made no sense he was a bit confused and he just said just delete that stuff and pretty much that's what we had to do um but it does generate the maps there is a glitch and it might be one of those bugs that can say you could say is a feature um <laughs> because uh as you can see right now, this late in the semester right yeah pretty much because right now you can see they all appear there's different nodes you can go to but if i click generate on a new map some of them don't appear uh and you could say that they're mystery rooms uh if you really wanted but i they you can still click them they're still there they just visually don't show up and i have no no reason why it doesn't make any sense uh they're not any different they're the same kind of nodes as the other ones they just don't want to visually show up. Um, sometimes you can get ones like those where like a lot of them don't, and sometimes you can get one where only two don't show up or zero, don't, um, you know, or invisible. But um, the map still works. You can still click on them. It's just more of a you're not sure which node you're gonna get. How um, important? How important is that random generation to the play of your game? I, I find it pretty important because um, that I, that was the main thing that I wanted to have. I think that was like my main topic was having this randomly generated map okay. um, because it also makes it a lot more replayable, especially when you have when I if I had more types of nodes, because then it can change the entire way you play like you might get a different boss at the end, or yep. uh, you can go, you can choose a different path like um, if I find a better example of a map layout, uh, one that has more variety so I can go down up these paths and you know I'd fight a lot of guys which is normally would be incentivized with the shop, but I don't have that. Or I can go down here and take the safer route, which lets me get the campfire, which lets you heal your characters. Um, so it, it adds some choosing for the player, which is pretty fun. But if I um, click one of these, they do work. Uh, this is not anything new, they do work. Um, but the other big thing that I really wanted to work on and I did get working on, I actually got in contact with Elijah in this class because I, I I asked him if he knew how to, if he can help me with this, was having something that would save the health between the fights, which was a major thing. It took a little bit of time and a lot of just like confusion. But as you can see, it does actually save their health. Um, if I, at the end of the fight, it will take whatever their final values are and save it. And then it will load it into the next fight. And I have a do not destroy on it, so um, it will save, obviously, and we'll get rid of it, and it will just continue it through the next um, scene, which was really important. So then I was able to get those campfire scenes where you can choose to heal a character to full health. Um, I, I still am working out the kinks on that. Let me just, if I go to it right now, um, it won't entirely work when you just select the scene because you need to have, you need to have gone through the first fight for yep. the saver to be there because it's through the first fight scene but i just made this little campfire scene um it's gonna give me an error real quick because again i don't have the saving thing but if i went on full screen these buttons actually look correct 
Um, let me just do that. So I have it so you can choose one of the characters. It, you can click them and they'll go to full health. Um, at the moment, I only tested it once and I literally just put this in before the class where um, the, it doesn't update their health. And I think it's just a small thing because the script, it's not too complicated. Um, it's just like a simple just taking the values and then loading them in and replacing uh -huh. those values. So it, it's something small. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I as well, there's a lot of bug fixing still to be done. Um, I still have a couple of visual bugs, such as like once you go through the map on your second fight, it, it still shows the the default values for the health bar. Um, I have right here where, you know, uh, normally it replaces this stuff. But once you get to your second fight, it keeps that one there and then has the other characters below it. That's another reason. I don't know why. I might have to manually put them in still i don't know or i can um fix it hopefully i can fix it because it would save a lot of time okay um that's pretty much it though okay well very cool any comments questions suggestions for donato and who was it helped you uh, uh, i had elijah help me. elijah thank you for helping him i was supposed to send you something on persistence and i forgot to sorry about that that's fine okay uh, any any other comments, questions, suggestions? This is Dorothy again. Um, just a, I don't know if this would be why, but didn't you used to have in your start menu a lot of different pictures? Um, I don't know if deleting those messed up why you're having like the blank spots. Um, yeah, so um, if I load the uh, first fight here, so right now it looks like this. I have a so I have it set up where um it kind of it will automatically generate it. It's in um one of my it's in my UI manager script, but essentially it takes all the values needed from the characters and figures out if they have a certain tag on them. And if they do, it will fill all the information in. Um, I mostly had that because originally my plan way back was I I was biting off more than I could chew because I thought I could have multiple choices of characters and a bunch of other things. So I was doing it to save time in the future where instead of having to make different versions of the UI, it was going to automatically do that. Um, I regret the choice now. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah. I don't know if this is exactly that, but I was talking about your main menu or and you, um, you're picking the different um, levels. Oh, yeah. Um, no, Because I, I know have... there used to be like a chest and there was like a back. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of deleting those might have messed something up um, with why you're having the it may have the um, blank spaces. It may have. So uh, the way that it works is that I had to I have it basically set up where this is like a the blueprint for the map um, and it has all these things that it can use for like um, nodes, essentially. So different kinds of nodes. Um, it may have to do with that. And it's another thing that I have to mess around with the scripts, but the scripts are they're very they're pretty confusing and they don't like it when you mess with them um so i might have to look into that but i think that might have to do with why they're turning invisible because it doesn't do it with the the one that it comes with which has everything and it's stuff so i don't know we'll have to see cool well that i would that, that, that it's come a long ways uh, that's very very cool any comments, questions, suggestions? If not, stop sharing. Okay, so uh, let's see. Yeah, Matt, you do throw the steering wheel from lock to lock if you're drifting. Yeah, okay. So let me share my screen here.